Is a smart battery worth it? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I'm taking a look at the Power Queen 100 amp hour smart battery. What makes it smart is the Bluetooth technology that's built into it. And it's pretty slick to have on board, but there's a few things I just don't like about it. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, this is a 100 amp hour battery. I ran through the normal discharge test and it definitely passed that test. I believe that was 102.3 amp hours uh, that it came in at. Then I used the Power Queen 20 amp charger to recharge this battery before I placed it in the freezer overnight. And the reason I placed it in the freezer is I did want to test that low temp charge protection that's supposed to be built into this battery. And I'm happy to report that it did its job exactly like it was supposed to. Now, this battery comes in at roughly 22 and a half pounds. As I said, it is a 100 amp hour battery giving you 1,280 watt hours. It has a maximum continuous charge and discharge current of 100 amps, and the maximum continuous output power is 1,280 watts. This thing comes in at roughly 10 inches that direction. It is about uh, just short of eight and a half inches tall, and the width on it is just slightly over six and a half inches. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the app that's used to connect to this battery. Right out of the gate in this top left corner, you can see that the battery has a state of charge at 99%, and it says we've got still roughly 100.8 amp hours left in this battery. Now, it is in standby mode as indicating in the top right. If we were discharging the battery, it would show you the amount of time that it would take to discharge that battery based on your current consumption rate. It does show you the internal temperature of the battery right now is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, down below that, it will tell you the power, current, and voltage while you're charging or discharging that battery. And then down below that, you will see that we get a balance, which is grayed out right now. That works while you're charging it. And the sales and the BMS are both green. Now, in addition to that, let's look at the three buttons on the bottom. The second one here is just some troubleshooting in case you're unable to connect to the device. But this one on the far right is one that I particularly like. Right up at the top, you'll see we have a discharge switch. So basically, I can turn the battery on or off when it comes to discharge. So you don't want to do this with a load connected, but if you were going to use this battery, say, inside of a battery box, you could easily turn the battery off right here from this one switch. Now, we wouldn't want to use that middle device. That's to remove it from this Bluetooth app, and you would do that by sliding that button to the right. The other one that you can do is actually turn the battery off itself. So if you wanted to completely power the battery down, you could slide that last switch to the right. And the way you power it on is just to apply a charger to the battery. Now, with all of that goodness baked right into the app, why would I say that I don't like it? Well, here's the thing. First of all, I had to create an account in order to be able to use the app to check on this battery. And there's no need for me to have to create an app just to Bluetooth to this battery. So that's just one of those things that I'm kind of picky about and I don't need to create one more account or keep up with one more account just to uh, connect to a battery. It's a simple Bluetooth connection. It shouldn't be that difficult. Now, even after I created an app, then I noticed that it has to have my exact location before it will allow me to connect over Bluetooth to this app. Again, that's just something that I don't think the application needs is my precise location in order to connect to the battery. Now, I'm running Graphene OS at this point, and one of the things I can do with Graphene OS is be able to turn off exactly or turn on exactly which permissions I want this application to have. So I was playing around with it. I disconnected it from the network, told it that it didn't have network permissions, and it still worked okay 
after I got logged in. But as soon as I turned off the GPS access, it would no longer connect to the battery over Bluetooth. And that just kind of seems a little strange to me. You're either within Bluetooth range with your phone or you're not. So I just don't like the fact that it has to have my exact location in order to connect to the battery. Outside of that, this battery did everything I would expect it to do. And I can't argue that that Bluetooth app is handy to use with this battery. It shows you both the uh, current discharge rate or the current charge rate, as well as that state of charge. It would also let you know when it was balancing the cells inside the battery or if you had some sort of issue with the battery itself. So all of those are good marks. I just wish you didn't have to create an account and you certainly don't need my GPS location in order for me to connect. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.